Welcome aboard the Greenline 45 flybridge. Greenline has become synonymous with creating efficient, eco-friendly cruising vessels from 33 feet all the way up to 68. Today we're on board the Greenline 45. My name is Joe Fox and I'm going to show you through this Australian debut. Welcome aboard. The Greenline 45 is available in two models. Here we're on the Flybridge model today. Also available as a coupe model. So this is without the Flybridge, uh, more of a one style level um, living sedan uh, kind of boat. On the aft end of the Greenline 45, we have a lovely large hydraulic platform. Now this is an option. The standard setup is just a transom with a small walkway. Um, this option upgrades, gives you a really nice aft platform, plenty of space. Obviously you can put a, uh, a dinghy on here as well on chocks. So this makes for a really good option um, if you do want to have a tender on board. Also on the aft end of the boat, there's an optional barbecue. This boat doesn't have it fitted, um, but it's a nice wet bar style barbecue on the door to the aft garage. So inside this aft garage, you can see plenty of storage. We've got the aft stern ladder here, plenty of fenders, lines, shore power. There's also access down here into the engine room. That's quite a clever way of getting into the back end of the boat underneath. All in all, really nice storage area. After your swim on the aft platform, you do have the boarding ladder here and a convenient shower for rinsing off, obviously fresh water. Shower with hot and cold. Once the stern platform has been lowered, launching your dinghy, whatever, um, there is a ladder here that exposes itself that you can fold down. So access down to the stern platform is nice and easy. You don't have to jump down. As you make your way up the stairs from the aft platform, the cockpit is uh, quite large. So there's a lovely teak wooden table here. Uh, cup holders in it, all well, these can be removed if you don't want the, um, the detail. But overall, a really good working deck. So either side, we have fair leads with solid cleats. Now with this setup, you can option a capstan, which if you're using the boat shorthanded or on your own, um, you haven't got hands on the dock, it can be a really nice way of having that extra power if the wind is, is pushing the boat around when you're trying to park. Overall, the aft cockpit is quite large. You know, you've got a nice servery uh, direct into the galley here. A um, couple of deck chairs around this side combined with the, the comfortable bench seat across the back would make for a very nice place to hang out. Moving upstairs to the flybridge, this is probably one of the most impressive parts on this model. It does feel very secure and safe. We are quite high here above the water, but we have a very kind of ergonomic driving helm position far, far enough forward to see the bow and have good visibility that way. But also as I'm driving the boat, I've got very good visibility down to my port aft corner um, through the access hatch. So really driving from up here, parking port side two, which you will most of the time from up here. Um, yeah, it's for a, for a big boat, nearly 50 feet. Uh, this boat is overall, it does feel like a very manageable size. Just forward and to the side of the helm station, there is a very nice sun lounging area. This can be optioned with lifting backrests you do want that little bit of extra comfort, um, but this is a great, you know, relaxation and, uh, and chilling pad. Just after that, down the starboard side, we have this lovely wet bar. So this is an electric Kenyan grill. Very nice option. It's got the, the fat collector in the bottom, which you can take out, rinse, or chuck away and replace um, with a freshwater sink as well. Underneath some storage, we've got a couple of covers in there now, as you can see, and of course, the important flybridge fridge. Now the seating around this large table at the back of the flybridge is very comfortable. So I, I would say we could get around five or six people comfortably around here. A couple of deck chairs around there. You're talking seven, eight, maybe even nine people up here um, under the shade of the T-top or the bimini um, in quite a lot of comfort. My favorite place to sit. We were out on the boat the other day doing its first sea trial. It's just right back in the corner here. So there are two options for coverings on the flybridge. This one we have fitted here is the optional bimini from the factory, very traditional canvas bimini. There is also a optional T-top, so a solid T-top with some solar panels on it. In addition to the standard solar that we have just forward of the flybridge as well, which obviously gives you a solid awning and increases your solar capacity. Importantly, Greenline supplies every single model throughout the range with at least 1.2 kilowatts of standard solar. Now there are options to upgrade as with the, um, the T-top on here. If you do have the coupe model, obviously none of this exists. The, the height of the boat is a little bit shorter. The air draft is lower. 
um, but you do get a standard nine 330 watt solar panels. So the helm station is in a nice position on the bench seat. I've got space for two here. It is a kind of more centered driving position, which is great, you know, obviously on the center line of the boat when you are at speed, but up here we've got everything we need. It's not the master control, so there are some things we don't have access to up here, like the autopilot remote, um, but to all intents and purposes, it's pretty much a mirror copy of what we have downstairs. The Yanmar engine controls, throttle, bow and stern thruster on this model, so parking is, uh, is quite easy. Um, bow thruster is standard, stern thruster is an option. Um, also trim tabs up here, we've got all the functioning, so the horn, the anchor, nav light, safety lights, all the, the operational side, radio, FM remote, obviously you can connect your Bluetooth and have your favorite songs playing, VHF obviously very important, and two 16 inch Simrad plotters, so it doesn't leave anything wanting up here, you've got absolutely everything you need for, uh, for running the boat. Moving down the side of the boat to the bow, same width on either side, high ball works, easy for holding on, good if you have kids as well on board, it gives it a little bit of added security, there's a midships cleat here, Moving forward, the rail does come up slightly, so it's not dipping away at all as I come up to the bow, which is a nice feature. A lot of boats, the rail dips away and you lose the protection. Up here on the bow, we have another comfortable area for sun lounging. So optional cushions to go in here. Obviously lights, so you know, if, it's, if it's, the sun is setting, have a nice bit of atmospheric lighting. And moving forward, there is a quite a spacious operational deck here so very easy access to the cleats no fair leads required cleats are mounted on the gunnel so casting a line tying off especially on your own is quite easy inside the anchor hatch plenty of space the anchor has its own compartment next to it there's another compartment for spare fenders lines all the rest of it a quick windlass quick the brand not quick the speed and a hardwired remote here. So there is also a remote on the flybridge for the anchor and a remote at the internal helm station. So three remotes in total. The side access down the starboard side is quite a bit different from the port side. We have the internal helm station on the starboard side. So on the flybridge, you have the helm on port. Down here at the main helm station, you have it on starboard. So easy access through to the edge of the boat here, right next to the cleat. So if you're parking on your own or short crewed, you can grab a breast line straight onto the cleat. Just a little bit further aft is a very clever little side gate, but it opens and it goes into a recess here. So it doesn't actually impede the width of the access. There's also a very cool little telescopic railing, um, which opens and really doesn't get in the way of anything. You can step right off onto the dock or onto another boat or Try your backflip if you want into the water. So moving in to the main helm station from the side access, the door is a nice hide. It's not too big, so it doesn't ruin the look of the boat from the outside. And I've got very good visibility, you know, and access out of here is really quite simple. Sitting at the helm station, we've got a very good view out over the front. We've got a single piece glass windshield, which is fantastic. It really doesn't leave any um, blind spots when you are looking forward. The dash and the helm station is very similar to what we have upstairs, albeit in a, a little more detail. So we have the autopilot remote, and um, we've got a chain counter with a numerical readout, which we didn't have upstairs. Um, we've also got the searchlight control. The chart plotters that we have here at the helm station are exactly the same as upstairs. So twin 16 inch Simrad plotters. But aside from that, throttles are very easy to, to reach. They are protected which I really like behind this pillar. So when the door is open, you know, someone walking past or when you're making your way out, you can't knock the throttles, which is a great safety feature. Bow and stern thruster here as well. And a nice, nice height wheel with a footrest. So you can, you can drive the boat seated like I am, or you can kind of perch, but not a lot to be gained from perching. On the coupe model, there is an option for a opening sunroof here. Now, if you do have that option, that's when you might be standing up fully with your head just out of the sunroof. But on this model, it's obviously solid with the solar panels on top. There are four methods of propulsion on the Greenline 45. You can do a standard shaft, diesel motor. 
you can do a diesel motor with IPS. That's an IPS 600. You can do a hybrid model, and then you can also do a fully electric model. Now the fully electric model is charged from solar power and the shore power. Um, and this is a big lithium battery bank with an electric motor. The hybrid model um, features a Yanmar diesel engine. On the back of the diesel engine is a very large electric motor. Now this doubles up when it's in electric mode, it, it's an electric motor. When it's in diesel mode, the diesel motor is turning the electric motor and it's essentially a generator charging all the batteries. So on a hybrid boat like that, you often don't need a separate diesel generator. The IPS 600 drive um, obviously gives you some different maneuvering capabilities. It comes with the IPS joystick maneuvering system, which is a very clever system for maneuvering the boat, especially shorthanded if you're, or if you're on your own. So the hull on the Greenline 45 is quite a fast semi-displacement hull. Now this is really economical at kind of six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 knots. Um, when you're fully off the plane, but it also comes into its own at kind of 18 knots plus when you're into the twenties it's quite an efficient hull as well. So it's really good balance between a fully planing boat and also a slow trawling speed kind of efficient hull design. So moving into the main area of the saloon, this is really the social hub of the interior of the boat. Sitting here on the, uh, the dining table, I've got very high windows. Um, so there's a lot of light coming in. I think it's a clever design feature that, you know, the windows don't look massive from the outside of the boat, um, but internally we've got, you know, the windows taking up nearly three quarters of the wall. So it's a very kind of light and airy place. So there's plenty of seating for probably up to six people comfortably around here, um, focused around this amazing table, which is really the centerpiece of the boat. It really brings the saloon to life. It's a very you know, artistic piece of, uh, piece of wood. So it really finishes it nicely inside. Here we have the silver oak finish. Now this is an option, the standard interior is a golden teak. It's got this lovely rich golden color to it. There is also a darker walnut, which is more of a brown. And then we have the silver oak on display here. So three quite nice options, which complement the interior styling perfectly. The interior has been meticulously designed by Marco Casali, very well renowned Italian interior designer. And that really shows that Greenline have brought him on board. On the starboard side of the saloon and opposite all the main seating area, there is a fantastically large TV. Now this is great because it's nice and hidden away when you're not using it, but you can pop it up and it's really, for the area, it's a big TV and perfectly positioned opposite to the seating and dining. Underneath here, there is storage, drawer storage. So moving further aft, we step down one step into the galley, a large sink, lovely Corian worktop. So it blends in really nicely all in one piece. Uh, there is a rubbish and recycling bin hidden here nicely under the worktop, as well as an induction cooktop. Um, underneath, plenty of storage with space for cutlery, and there's also an electric oven down here as well. Microwave options are available should you want them as well. Standing in the galley, looking aft, obviously over the cooktop, I've got a really, you know, it's a seamless connection between the aft cockpit and the galley moving into the saloon. So, you know, for preparing food, it's a perfect boat for, you know, an, uh, an owner host kind of situation. You have your friends out on the back area, you can be loading drinks out here and, you know, plates of hot food and, and all the rest of it. This does fold up nicely so that the door can close. Opposite the galley at the back of the saloon, we have the classic famous green line fridge. Um, Always the biggest in its class on a green line with a freezer down here. So it doesn't leave you wanting for fridge space. Storage up top and storage in here as well. Now it's really all these homely aspects that make spending time on a green line feel really like it is at home. So it's a very livable, usable area. From an operational side, um, the electronic switchboard, uh, master switches for the batteries, all your systems, 12 volt, uh, 230 volt, are all located in here in one place. So nice, easy access to those. Blows me away this boat because everywhere you look, there is a cupboard which opens. So above the galley, plenty of storage. I just noticed down here, even more storage. So every single cavity has a use. It's a really a, quite a clever design. 
So the best really is yet to come on this walkthrough. Now, the Green Line 45 is renowned for the full beam master cabin located directly under the saloon. This is a three cabin layout. So we have a master cabin, a VIP cabin, and then also a kiddies cabin, a crew cabin, um, just down here on starboard. We'll start just down on port in the main master cabin. Now we're actually down below the saloon here, but you do not feel like you're running out of headroom. The way that it's designed is very clever. So I step up here, but I have plenty of headroom above me at all times. The bed on here is huge. It looks like a king bed. I didn't bring my tape measure with me today, unfortunately, um, but it's way bigger than a queen. It looks really quite comfortable. Um, lots of storage around either side. Look at that hanging room in there. A lovely sideboard here with cupboard storage underneath as well. It's very nicely done in here. It's, it's lit incredibly tastefully. It's not, not overdone on the lighting. Um, hidden strip lighting above the windows, some nice reading lights, as well as these little directional lights as well. So it, um, you know, the, the light we've got coming in, the natural light in here is amazing for a cabin that is under the saloon in the very middle of the boat. So very, very impressed with this. On the port side of this main cabin, we have the TV as well as a heap more storage in there. And the best part of this cabin is the lounge down here. So perfect place to come down, get out the sun, wind down after a long day, read a book with the ocean just a couple of feet away from me there. So um, this cabin is what makes this vessel. So again, I'm just finding more and more storage everywhere. So under these cushions, you know, storage in here, every little area has been made use of. It's very, very clever. So both the main cabins, the master cabin down here and the VIP cabin forward have a connected ensuite um, with a separated shower. So you're not showering over the toilet. It's a full height shower, very, very nice looking rain shower in there. Ventilation and natural light are also good. Moving out of the aft cabin, green line again, making use of every little bit of space they can on board. Um, so dead space under the stairs, you can actually put a washer dryer in here. So top access, top loader washer dryer. This can also be accessed from in the master cabin as well. Down the starboard side here, we probably have the most configurable part of the boat. Now the standard setup gives this area two walk-in robes. So it's divided in the middle and you can access one of them from the master cabin and the other one from the VIP cabin. Now that's the standard setup. Obviously just gives you two very spacious, very comfortable double cabins on board. The other option is a single bunk in here. There's another option that's a French double. Now that's just a little bit smaller than a normal double that we have here in Australia. And you can also put another bunk cabin in there. So you could really sleep three you know, kids or people that know each other very well in here if you wanted, but the standard setup consists of two walk-in robes, one for each main cabin. Exactly opposite this walk-in robe additional cabin option, we have the day head. Now, this is the main head on the boat that people during the day would use, that come down to use it. Same internal quality as the head in the master cabin as well. So both the showers, both in the uh, day head that we're in now and the master head are very spacious. I've got plenty of room above me. The nice part about this day head is that it opens up into the VIP cabin in the bow. So this door into the passageway can be locked, um, giving the VIP cabin direct access, creating its own ensuite for those that want it. Moving from the day head through into the VIP cabin, this cabin is probably as big as most masters in this class of boat. So up forward in this VIP cabin, there is an incredible amount of natural light. We have four port lights, two on each side that can open as well when the boat is stationary. There is also this vertical window. Now all of the green lines have this kind of setup. You don't actually see these windows from the outside of the boat, um, but it's nice to have vertical glass. And what gives us you know, more natural light and makes this cabin feel even bigger is the fact that we have the cutouts in the gunnel, which when you're looking at the boat from the outside, you don't see these cutouts at all. They blend in perfectly with the lines of the boat. Um, but it gives me, I'm standing here, great visibility out um, the side of the boat, which would otherwise be quite solid. So very clever design. In the roof, 
This would be under the sun lounger if you had it on top. We have a nice skylight with a fly screen and of course a block out blind so that you don't get waken up too early in the morning. Plenty of nice lighting, identical quality to the master as well. So it's really this downstairs area is really finished on a very high level. And again, this storage that just keeps blowing my mind every time is absolutely everywhere. There is also a small TV here as well. So three TVs on board, one in the main cabin and then one in each large cabin as well. Okay, so there's one last place to look. Let's wrap this tour up by taking a good look in the engine bay, which is of course one of the most important places. I'll jump in and you can follow me down. Access down into the engine bay is via a nice aluminium ladder, so you feel very secure heading down. This engine room is incredibly well laid out. So either side of me, I've got the twin 370 horsepower shaft drive engines um, on this model. Just behind me there is the generator. This is out of the way. It doesn't get in the way of the access to the engine room. Um, but just looking around, you know, it's all incredibly neatly laid out. We've got a 5,000 watt inverter optioned on this one. All the controllers for the solar panels, uh, fuel tanks either side in their own boxes. Very important systems are very easily accessible on this boat. The bow thruster at the stern, as well as the steering, the rudders, the hydraulic, the autopilot, all the important systems that you need good access to. So that brings us to the end of this uh, walkthrough on the Green Line 45 Fly. I'm overly impressed with this model. I think it's fantastic. I think it's perfectly suited to the waterways that we get here. Um, you know, it's a fast boat. It's comfortable in a bit of swell. We've had it in a bit of swell. Um, but it's the perfect boat for getting away for the weekend, for longer trips, coastal cruising, um, and a really wide range of um, uses. If you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe to see more Greenline related content on the EYOTS YouTube channel. If you do have any questions about this model or would like to learn more information, drop an email to the team at EYOTS. We'd be more than happy to uh, speak to you. We look forward to welcoming you on board and talking all things Greenline. Welcome to the future.